Joining us now, Democratic Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, who chairs the Senate Intelligence Committee. Welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, I want to hit on a couple of things we talked about with Senator Cotton. Let's start with TikTok. Um, you also have concerns about this, and you're also quoted now as saying, as painful as it is for me to say, if Donald Trump was right and we could have taken action then, that would have been a heck of a lot easier than trying to take action in November of 2022. Okay, did Washington simply not listen because they didn't like the messenger then, and what can we do now? Well, I think Donald Trump was right. I mean, TikTok is an enormous threat. It's a threat on two levels. One, it is a massive collector of information, oftentimes of our children. Uh, they can visualize even down to your keystrokes. So if you're a parent and you got a kid on TikTok, I would be very, very concerned. All of that data uh, that your child is inputting and receiving is being stored somewhere uh, in Beijing. Uh, the idea that we can somehow separate out uh, TikTok from the fact that the actual engineers writing the code in Beijing, I think is a Justice Department is trying to come up with a solution. I'm going to let, I'm going to take a look at that solution, but they got a huge mountain to climb. The second problem is is that TikTok, in a sense, is a a broadcasting network, in a sense. And if the Chinese Communist Party and TikTok, at the at the end of the day, has to be reliant on the Communist Party, the China law states that. If they suddenly want to dial up the fact that we are going to decrease the content that criticizes mm -hmm. Chinese leadership, but increase the content that your kids may be seeing saying, hey, you know, Taiwan really is part of China. That is a distribution model that would make RT or Sputnik or some of the Russian mm -hmm. propaganda models pale in comparison. Okay, so some bipartisan agreement on that. Um, let's talk to you also about the issue with the Crown Prince in Saudi Arabia. You heard what the senator said about um, how we characterize the relationship we have with Saudi Arabia. You said back in 2018 when President Trump was in the White House that he failed to hold Saudi Arabia responsible in any meaningful way for the death of Jamal Khashoggi. So you heard about what this, the State Department has essentially done now, saying he should have sovereign immunity. Will you also call out President Biden for not being tougher? Here's, well, let's... And again, I hate to show so many places where I actually may agree with my friend Tom Cotton. <laughs> it's he not a bad thing. He, where you... he and I are on the same. He's on the Intel Committee with me. The reason why there was a grant of sovereign immunity, even to leaders we don't like, mm -hmm. is, is as much to protect American leaders and American diplomats when they're posted abroad from being subject to Saudi Arabian law or Russian law or South African law. So this is this has been a historical precedent. Do I think the murder of Jamal Khashoggi was awful? Absolutely, absolutely. Am I disappointed, particularly in the most recent times when Saudi Arabia, which used to be a bulwark against the Soviet Union for decades on end, decided to kind of skate the middle in terms of siding with democracies against Vladimir Putin's illegal invasion of Ukraine. I'm very disappointed there. But I also have to, we, we need to be enough of a realist to realize that Saudi Arabia has been a bulwark against Iran. It is a leader in a very messy part of the world. And if there are ways that we can continue to push the Saudi government, MBS in particular, towards greater reform and a willingness to get off the sidelines and stand with democracies against Putin's war in, in Ukraine, I think that would be a good thing. Was it unfair then to, to criticize President Trump for not being tougher on them two or three years ago and, and then say, well, the Biden administration is just doing what they have to do? Look, I think you saw many members within the Trump administration at that moment in time call out the, the Saudi leadership for the brutal murder of Khashoggi. What you didn't see because of this, you know, strange... Um, affinity that President Trump and his family, remember his, his son has received massive investments from the Saudi investment funds, those still bother me a great deal. Okay, uh, I want to talk about the same-sex marriage bill, um, the Respect for Marriage Act, that essentially um, has gotten through this first vote in the Senate. It will have more action down the line, but it essentially ensures that all 50 states will recognize same-sex marriages from other states. Conservatives are warning, though, that the Biden administration could end up using this as a weapon. Here's something that Senator Ted Cruz said on his podcast about it this week. Any charity that believes marriage is the union of one man and one woman, 
any charity that does not embrace same-sex marriage, this bill is designed to strip their 501c3 status to persecute the churches and universities and schools and charities. So Senator Mike Lee has... Well, first of all, let's, let's make one thing clear. Okay. One more time, Ted Cruz is 100% wrong. Okay, let's talk on, about why. On that statement. You would not see, and one of the things that, that gained 12 Republican votes, mm -hmm. and I think more on final passage, is there were greater protections for religious freedom put in. And so you see uh, the Mormon church. You see a number of mainstream Protestant um, denominations. You see a series of other faith organizations actually support this marriage equality law. And this, remember, this marriage equality law is not only about same-sex marriage, but it also validates something that uh, uh, literally 60 years ago in my state of Virginia was illegal, mm -hmm. which was interracial marriage. I think this is where the vast majority of Americans are, are at. I think you will see the numbers even go up in the Senate okay. as we get to the final passage. We saw 47 House members vote in favor of this legislation. Mr. Cruz, one more time, saying stuff that has no basis in truth okay. or fact, that's just you, okay, how, you we, know, how, critics, we, how, we, how we rolls. Well, but critics are worried. Senator Mike Lee is among those who say they are sort of toothless protections in there for religious minorities, and, and not minorities, but people who hold what, of whatever faith they are, this conviction about traditional marriage um, is his wording. He's offered this amendment. I've got it here in my hand. He says it's it, done in good faith. It will offer further protection to people and religious organizations. Why not allow a vote on the amendment? If, if that is... A truly an issue, and it may get you more votes, but more protections for those who have yeah, religious I would, freedom. I would issues. first of all point out the fact, you know, I believe M M Mike Lee is a, a member of the Mormon Church. Mm -hmm. um, his organization, his church, but he still got concerns. His church endorsed the legislation. My understanding, and I have not followed all of the ins and outs of what happened two nights ago. I believe there was an offer on a 50 vote margin for. Mr. Lee to have that kind of amendment. I think this is a, a, a series of folks that just don't want this to happen, and they're going to throw up roadblock after roadblock you, after roadblock. Would you let them have a vote on the amendment? Again, so my, it would under, call their fears. my understanding is that that vote was offered. Okay. My understanding is they want to try to do it after Thanksgiving. There's a lot of time am, between listen, now and then. If, if the vote was offered this week, which I believe it was, and I'm sure your your viewers will correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, but but that was kind of the yeah. The, and talking you know, with his the, office, the, they want to offer this up well, after Thanksgiving. Listen, so well, other than simply trying to delay, other than simply trying to burn off the clock so that we can't get to things but like this the defense bill, to get, with, if he had a chance to have the vote on Thursday, why didn't he take the vote then? Okay, we'll ask him. Um, right. But but they under my understanding is his office will offer this up after Thanksgiving. You guys will have a chance to look at it and and potentially maybe you'll win over a few more votes if this amendment is considered. End of the day, end of the day, some of the opponents want to do everything they can to run out the clock. I would again urge people of goodwill to look not only at the Mormon Church but look at all of the church organizations that have felt that religious freedom is protected. There is nothing in this bill that would require any faith to marry anyone that they don't want married mm -hmm. in their house of worship. I know they have more concern at, at religious universities and schools as well. We appreciate your time, and um, we wish you the best Thanksgiving with your family. I know you have a lot to celebrate this year. Thank you, Shannon. Happy Thanksgiving Thank to you. You too. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.